For Krima Media's quality, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column, People in Government Are Not Listening to the Cries of Pain. They no longer hear them. You refer to the ANC having lost the trust of the people. So what does that mean and how does one measure trust that has been lost and won? Well, you know, at a statistical level, the votes show that the ANC lost votes for the first time, got under 50% in elections. But historically, the ANC uh, over decades gradually built for itself a place in the hearts of the oppressed people of South Africa. It won that place by showing that it was prepared to fight for the rights of the oppressed and the poor, and many people were beaten up, tortured, went to jail, or died for that. In the early years of democracy, the ANC did provide many things uh, that improved the lives of people, but some of these have been reversed or not continued. And what people have learned is that instead of the funds that were provided for housing, water, electricity, etc., going to provide for the poor, they lined the pockets of politicians or those associated with them. Now, many of the people in these townships or rural areas may not have known directly who it was who benefited, but they looked around them and they saw the water was not clean. There was sewage running into their houses or in the streets. Uh, they had no roofs over their heads. So over time, the ANC, many of whom came from the oppressed, lost the, the trust of the people from whom they came. And you can see this in the reception that Ramaphosa got in some townships that he visited during the election. So that's what I mean by losing the trust. There was a connection. There was a trust. There was a sense of belonging between the two. It's no longer there. And you place a lot of weight on exemplary leaders listening carefully and that leaders of today do not listen to the cries of pain of the poor. So how do you explain this when many of these leaders themselves experienced hardships and observed it in communities they came from? Something that I think we have to remember is that when some of these people came from exile, for example, that's just one section of the leadership some of the families of these people believed that they'd come back from exile and then they'd be able to look after them, provide for them, and so forth. Now, I worked with these people at ANC headquarters in 1990, and we were earning 2,000 rands a month. So they were not getting millions to be able to provide for their families. But there was an expectation, there was a pressure because these people who would, in normal circumstances, have been breadwinners for the family at large, were actually not able to provide for them adequately, so that there was a need to have more money. And some of these people succumbed to a temptation. I'm not saying this is the total explanation and it's purely exiled, but I'm saying temptation came the way of many politicians. Some of them had a lot of pressure that made it possible for them to succumb to these pressures, and they did this. That's giving a, a good uh, reason for them becoming dishonest. I don't think there's ever a good reason. However, I think we must understand that uh, these people were not wealthy. And many of them were very brave. So it's very hard to explain how they succumbed to these pressures. And I'm saying one of the reasons is that they had a lot of family responsibilities, but you know, they didn't just eat one million, they eat, many of them eat millions, you know. So I can't explain it completely. And lastly, Raymond, you're right that many seem to forget that keeping the ANC unified and avoiding a split is not a national issue, but an ANC concern, a concern of an organization that may well fail to command a majority of votes in the next election. 
why do you find it necessary to say this? Well, you know, many commentators say Sir Ramaphosa is playing the long game and he doesn't want the ANC to split. The unity of the ANC is very close to his heart. He doesn't want to be the president who presides over an ANC split. But people can't wait for their basic needs to be met because the ANC is divided. Whether the ANC is divided or not divided is not a national issue. It's a party political issue. And that does not concern the man in Bushbuck Ridge who hasn't got basic needs met, who hasn't got land, who hasn't got water, hasn't got a proper housing, whose children are not going to school or having to go long distances by foot to get to school. So it's very important to understand that what the media commentators sometimes point to as a reason for the ANC not doing things applies to the ANC, but it is not a concern of the people of South Africa who want their lives better with the funds, the taxes that they've paid. That was Professor Raymond Swatner speaking to Krimo Media's polity about people in government are not listening to the cries of pain. They no longer hear them.